Yes. Look at me. I'm a wine professional. So, so professional here. Um, whatever. I just went running. I'll be. Uh, Roberto Enriquez, Tierra de Pumas. I am so excited to finally actually have that here. This, this here in Maine. Um, this is 2020. No, this is 2019. Duh, right, 2019. So, uh, I believe I drank this back in the spring when I was down there in Chile uh, in Bio Bio. So anyway, so this is Roberto Enriquez. This is Bio Bio Chile. So this is like 300 miles south of Santiago. Um, so it's like southern rural Chile down uh, past Concepcion. Um, Interior Bio Bio, uh, not not near like the ocean, not close to the uh, the river, uh, Bio Bio River that that is. Um, this is 200 plus year old Pais vines on a little plot that Roberto owns. Uh, it's where his original winery was. I don't know if this was like the house belonged to his parents or something, but they've had it for a little while. Um, he still makes some wine here. There's fig trees, apple trees, there are beehives, there's so much amazing stuff. Um, but there's this plot, and it's, this is actually a good drawing of the vineyard. Um, there's this little hill, um, and there's vines all around it and then up on the hill. It's, it's really interesting. There's a little stream that comes through, and so it's like this tight little valley, and parts of it are very sheltered, but then up on the hill, are, uh, it's more exposed and the hill's not very high it's you know like 60 feet high or 50 feet high or something like that um, red granitic like sort of and some clay soil but a lot of like red granite and granitic like broken up um, soil uh, it's interesting this little hill, the vines ripen, you know, differently on it. So Roberto was saying that he harvests this over several weeks. Um, when I was talking to him back in March, he said that it was like a three week process. Like they'd harvest, uh, I want to say the top first and the grapes from the top were like brighter and higher in acidity. And then as you, you know, like they'd wait a couple days and work like the middle and then they, you know, are a little bit further down and then they'd wait like a week and, you know, and so it was almost like three weeks later by the time they were harvesting the grapes that were down at the bottom that were really sheltered that had gotten less sun. But those grapes took a lot longer to ripen and had more power, more, you know, like more ripeness and stuff like that, more more weight to them. So it's an interesting wine. Um, and then, you know, hand harvested, uh, sort of like macerated, ferment, the grapes ferment with natural yeast for off the top of my head, I want to say it was like 10 days. Um, I probably shouldn't just make things up, but anyway. Uh, and then uh, aged in concrete tanks. Uh, is there anything else I should say about this before? No, no, I should probably just drink this. Uh, oh, right, this little plot, this spot, it's surrounded by forest and the forest around it, it's like uh, Rowley trees, the Chilean variety of tree, Rowley. Um, that is not oak. People call it oak. It's actually related to the beech, which is a part of the beech family, but very slow growing hardwood tree. Um, that's very like very rare in Chile now because it was all cut down to replace it with trees that grow faster, that are better for logging and stuff. Anyway, the woods around here are full of, of Rowley, of like old um, uh, Chilean, like indigenous Rowley trees. So it's a really, it's a really cool, like special spot here. And, um, I don't know if there's still mountain lions or there used to be mountain lions, but hence the name Tierra de Pumas, uh, because there were mountain lions here. Uh, it's, it's like perfect habitat for them. So anyway, gonna move on to drinking this now. So 100% Pais vines. The label here says that this is 11.5% alcohol. It smells juicy like blueberry, raspberry, some like bright red, like almost like wild cherry 
I'm gonna put my hood back up because it's cold and I think it makes me look more professional. It makes me look more like a wine professional if I'm out here next to this graffiti hanging out with my hood up. Um, it smells spicy though. It smells a little bit like wintergreen, like juniper, which is a, I think a Pais thing. Uh, but it's a little bit more, it, smell, it smells spicier and woodsier than um, Roberto's other wines from this vintage, than like the Santa Cruz de Coya, Pais Franco, Notre Tinto. This, to me, I think smells spicier. It's like a little bit like very light Cabernet Franc. Or like it reminds me a little bit of like Pinot Donis. Yeah, and on the palate, so obviously I didn't just drink this whole bottle. I was drinking it last night. So I already had this experience. Um, it is a like more structured, angular, crunchy expression of Pais than, um, than I think any of Roberto's other wines. The Notre Tinto also has like a fair amount, it has a fair amount of structure and tannin, but the Notre Tinto is riper than this and has, it's just a, a bigger wine. Um, this is very pretty. Ju juicy, fresh, like raspberry, cranberry, but then this tannin like comes in, this like sneaky black pepper and like a hint of coriander and stuff. Boy, what else is that? It's like a little bit cinnamony and actually it's a little bit, it's like it's like black, raw, bitter baking chocolate. Like just a like not a, just a, a touch of that that gives the finish of this like a like a cocoa like because there's a fair amount of tannin in the texture, so it it ha in the finish, so it has this like texture, and it's dark. It do, it really reminds me of like of baking cocoa. Hmm. Yeah, basically, so this, it's got great acidity all throughout the wine that gives the wine this uplift. And then along with the tannins aren't, the tannins are like right in balance with the rest of the wine. Um, but they do like, they draw the finish out and they give it more structure. Like they dry your palate out. Um, and there's a lovely saltiness there that makes the finish linger and makes it more savory. Uh, so, but overall, like this wine, it's to me very much like a Cru Beaujolais, but it's like one of the lighter Cru's, like, I don't know, like Fleury or like Saint Amour, because like this is a bright, like nice, all like crunchy wine with acidity but also this has a like the the structure the acidity and the tannin are pretty prominent in the wine so it's like a lighter Cru Beaujolais but that is like a tiny bit sort of rustic and has structure to it it's a really interesting compelling wine and it's an awesome label uh and I'm really excited to have it now it uh it wasn't ready to ship in the original like wave of wines that came in from Roberto, so we just got this now, and it is making its way out there into the market. So, you'll see it around in the next week or two. Um, if you like things like lighter, crunchy Loire Cabernet Francs, Pinot de Nice, um, like really cool Cru Beaujolais, this is really excellent. Um, it is different from all of Roberto's other wines. It's really cool. Uh, worth checking out. I'm going to go, uh, I don't know, put on my tiger stripe jumpsuit now or something. Have a great afternoon.